Welcome everyone to Swanee County Board of County Commissioners meeting of May 4th, 2021 at 5 p.m. At this time, if everyone would please stand for our invocation and our pledge by Commissioner Land. Lord, we come to you tonight. Uh, first off, thanking you for your many blessings that you've disposed upon all of us. You guide us, you protect us, you watch over us and provide many things. We ask that you would protect and watch over our first responders, our military, their families. Um, we would ask for your guidance tonight in making the best decisions for all of Swanee County. Uh, we ask these things in your holy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Our first item of business this evening is approval of minutes from our April 20th, 2021 regular board meeting and also our April 27th, 2021 special called meeting. Do I have any questions, comments, or do I have a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Fleming. Second. Second, Second by Commissioner Hale. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Moving ahead to our consent agenda, we have items two through 10. At this time, I will pull item three for further discussion uh, by our county attorney. Other than that, do I have any questions or comments on any other items or do I have a motion to approve item two and then item four, items four through 10? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. May we pull number 10 just for yes, sir. discussion? Pull it for discussion. So at, so at this time, we have items number two four through nine and four through nine do i have a motion I, to approve i'll make a motion to approve those i ha i have a motion by commissioner land second second by commissioner white all in favor say aye. aye aye all opposed same sign motion carries at this time uh we will do item number three and mr Prevat. thank you mr chairman i asked to pull item three because of the governor's order that executive order that was issued yesterday afternoon uh, executive order 21-102 dealt directly with renewals of uh, establishing or renewals of local states of emergencies uh, as they relate to covid the order itself is directed toward orders local states of emergency that uh, deal with anything that has to do with folks' civil liberties, you know, wearing a mask, you know, can't within six feet, can't operate a business. So anything that has to do with a business or with the individuals, LSEs, he has suspended all of those um, at period, you know, going forward. There's also been Senate bill that passed two, uh, SB 2006, that'll deal further with emergency orders, but it won't, won't take effect until July 1st. They're changing some of the definitions of what emergency orders are and some of the procedures that will go along with establishing and uh, continuing um, emergency orders. But the reason, back to item number three, the problem with the, as I see it in the last 24 hours with the governor's order is that it doesn't get far enough to be able to address having a, uh, a local state of emergency established so that we can still be eligible for funding, uh, you know, help from the state, uh, which uh, if you turn and look at the CARES funding or Rescue Act funding, you know, those things are federal programs, but then they go through the state and you have to have that local state of emergency declared before you're eligible for that. So what I'm really asking today is to go ahead and uh, renew the LSE today. In the 24 hours, I just haven't had enough time and getting with other lawyers around the state, it just seems to be a gap right there that is not filled. So I would recommend go ahead with it and we'll see in the next day or two whether or not we actually have to get together again you know, in the seven days to be able to do that. So, so at this time, Mr. Vats asking that we go ahead and renew this and he's going to do some research and then he will obviously let the board know if we don't have to meet next Tuesday if it's not required. Just 
Any questions, comments? Motion Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Have a motion by Commissioner Fleming. Second. Second by Commissioner Land. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. At this time, uh, we will go to item number 10, Commissioner Land. Yes, sir. I, I just wanted to um, clarify with Mr. Harris, there's not a lot of backup information in here. I know the, straight, the state appropriation, the only document we have is that it's 300. Do you anticipate that being significantly over um, the 300,000 to complete that project, or are we talking about 50,000? Are we talking about maybe needing 100 or 500? Well, I would like to think that it would be $100,000 or less. We've, we have the stormwater pipe out to bid right now. We will be installing that ourselves. We're self-performing this project because that clearly, we've never had a $300,000 road project with DOT before. This was actually a request for a state appropriation. Um, it came in less than what we thought it would be a couple years ago. And then the state turned it over to DOT to administer. So it's entirely different than a scrap or scop. I'm thinking that there's probably going to be enough in there to cover the cost of the asphalt. Hopefully it'll cover the cost of just about everything. But what I can't do, can't do is once I, we get to the pipe and I come in here and the board approves the bid on the pipe and we have to purchase that. And then if we go to bid and it comes in a little bit over, I, I don't want to wait until then to come in and ask for the allocation of the funding. I understand. I don't have any reason to believe that it's going to be excessive, but at the same time, we just need to be prepared. Would Would you be okay if we if we cap that at like 150 or something? Just that's fine. I mean, yeah, because if it comes over, you'll know ahead of time. We'll have a better feel once the bids come in. I think on the 28th for the pipe. I just was a little unsure of the, month. the significance of the project. I didn't want it to turn into a runaway train. So without you know, no pun intended. That's yeah. where the crossing is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So That's fine. I don't have any problem with that. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm good with it if we could cap it at 150 to approve it. All right. I have, you offer that as a motion? Yes, sir. I have a motion by Commissioner Land. Second. Second, Second by Commissioner Hale. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving ahead, item number 11 is time specific for 6.05 p.m., so we will move and return back to that. Uh, item number 13. Discuss with, with possible board action enter, entering into an agreement with waste management for solid waste disposal and transportation. Mr. Harris. Commissioners, as you know, we bid this item. Um, I think probably all of us were shocked, if not disappointed, that the numbers came in so high. But um, it's very obvious that we don't have much in the way of alternative now. Um, we will, however, um, if the board approves this, continue to explore our options. Um, I've spoken to multiple counties, and we are going to be bidding out the transportation element of this. So I highlighted uh, what I believe to be some of the key points in that agreement for your consideration, and then um, Mr. Pravat added a few paragraphs to the transportation portion of that uh, today, and you've got those highlighted as well. So for now, I'm requesting that you go ahead and approve the agreement because our other agreement expires um, in another two weeks, I think it is. I have any questions for Mr. Harris at this time? I just had one on, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner White. Was on the... Uh, what page number there? I'm sorry, page six. Yes, sir. Under item nine, d down the 20% management fee, Mr. Harris, on the transportation. Yeah, that's a number they came up with. That's if we use who who they want to use to transport. Is that the way? Am I reading it correct? Uh, if let's they see. provide the I'll transportation. This 20% this applies to the rate that they're already charging in here. Contracted by the operator plus a 20% management fee to the operator for directing invoice and otherwise managing the transporter. In the last sentence, the operator's management fee shall remain at 20% of the adjusted transportation cost. That's, that's the point I'm getting at. Yeah. We, we're bidding out the transportation. Right. Is that correct? 
So then that 20% would not apply at that point? Is that what I, am I reading that? I'm sorry. The 20% is they're just trying to tell you why it's so high is because oh, okay. they're, right. they're throwing in the 20% to get it up to $27 at this point. Um, there can be an adjustment to the transportation costs under, um, you know, emergency basis, but we have to get, it's further on in the contract, but then we have to get together, meet, readjust the cost, you know, and like if uh, gas goes from two, whatever it is right now to, you know, $5, they can come in and say, oh, well, we need to have an adjustment because of the transportation costs, the, the fuel. And then we'll have an opportunity to negotiate with them, you know, at that point, uh, under, and and as to whether or not that's really an emergency, which is, may or may not be, uh, and then the cost at that particular point. Because the way I'm reading it, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, they're going to charge a transportation cost for a third-party transporter contracted by operator plus a 20% management fee. No, sir. It is included in that. In That's the, what I'm just saying. In the $28 per to, ton? Yeah, they're trying okay. to tell you why it's okay. $28. I'm with you. I'm with you now. I, it just looked like to me they're going to add 20% to it. No, sir. I'm thinking we already added enough. It's already. actually in the second <clears throat> sentence. It said said cost is composed of. Okay. It is composed of the transportation cost for the third party plus a 20% management fee. So it's already in there. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. I will say, though, and I thought you were going to ask this, they're still going to charge us something, even if we handle the transportation. <laughs> that was in that modified agreement, um, and there's still a charge for that, albeit here we've got a 30-day exit provision in here for transportation if we decide that we've got a better rate when we bid that. I have any other questions for Mr. Harris at this time? No, sir. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Have a motion by Commissioner uh, White. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Land. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. At this time, we'll move to item number 14, discuss with possible board action parameters for GSG studies for fire and solid waste. Mr. Harris. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, um, GSG sent us a list of information that they needed, and we have been trying to provide all of that information. One thing that we had to do, though, is they want us to go ahead and prepare and send to them a proposed budget for next year. Uh, and they wanted a copy of the current year budget. So that's what we're working on. I think that um, Chief Hand and I both have those budgets prepared with one exception. Um, there are a couple of things that the board will have to decide on so that we can finish out those budgets, proposed budgets, and send those on to GSG. On the fire side, you've got one page that reads kind of like a menu. And then on the solid waste, you've got several pages but probably the very first one is the one that um, similarly reads kind of like a menu. And you'll be asked to make a decision on something and inform us so that we can, like I said, finish out those proposed budgets and forward those to GSG. So we're prepared to answer questions or give you any additional information that you may need in order for us to forward this to them. Welcome, Chief Han. Thank you, sir. Uh, he dressed up for the occasion, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, sometimes I, I tend to do that. Clean up all right. At this time, I'll open up the floor to the board for questions, comments. What's the question is, which one of these four scenarios does the board want to do? Is that is that... Is that the task at hand? That's probably an accurate assessment. That's correct. So just have to make the decision on where you think we need to be in our level of service at these stations. Um, I mean, this is actually 
kind of dovetailing with previous discussions that we had on what it takes to run the stations. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Commissioner Hale. And this that we're the question he asks is for them to actually do a study for us. That's the reason. Okay. Yeah, they're going to conduct a study, but it, they're not going to be in the dark on this thing. They want us right. to tell them generally where we think we want to be or desire to be. Um, so we need to provide some information to them. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Fleming. I, um, I think the department here would know more better than we would know. But anyway, in our discussion the last time, uh, I like the fact that there will be somebody at, the, at those stations at all times when, you know, if a unit is gone and, and uh, fire wreck occur, someone there to keep those stations manned at all times. Um, I, 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 my preference. Uh, yes, sir. That's, that's correct. The, with the four man station, you know, call load will predict who's there. You can't, you know, if you get more than one call in a, in a district, of course, right now we get more than one call. That's all we can handle. Um, this gives us a 50% better chance of handling another call, uh, you know, with, with another crew there. If you have two calls in the same district back to back or determining what type of call it is, you may have all four people going to that call. You know, if it's a wreck, you're going to have that engine crew and that ambulance crew going to it. But it does give us a, a lot better chance of having that, that crew available when something else comes out. And I, and I know, you know, God forbid, but things happen. And at any given time, we, it, it's something that we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen, you know, and I, I'd rather be prepared than unprepared. Right. Uh, I know it, it, it comes with a cost, but um, I, I hope that we can get our, you know get our heads together, keep our heads together, that we can. Uh, but this group of men out here, the men and women that you got working for you, I'm I'm proud of them. I'm very proud of every each and every one of them, what they do for this county. Uh, I, I did talk with a couple of them this morning, uh, and I'm I'm very proud how they operate and what they're doing. I am as well. Yes, <laughs> Chairman. O'Hare. Thank you, Commissioner Fleming, for the comments. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner um, Lamb. I mean, I, I appreciate what these guys do for us as well. I think at any given time, any of <coughs> us in this room could rely on their services and need them, and, and, and not in a minor way. Um, so it, I, I don't want to undermine the task at hand by uh, not letting those guys know how much we appreciate them and, and what they do for this county. But, and, and it's my opinion that I would, I would like to see, and I, I appreciate what Mr. Fleming said, but I would like to see us do option two, um, at least give it a try. Just get to the 1550 mark and do the two-man stations, albeit getting out of the, emer getting out of the non-emergency transfer business and see what that does for our staffing, see what that does for our, our, our turnover rate. Um, you know, get these guys out of riding in an ambulance 12, 14 hours a day. And I believe that we may see an increase uh, uh, in our in what our budget looks like due to those expenses being out of the way. Um, I mean, I mean, that's my uh, that's my take on it. Just just out the gate to 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 try to number one get get out of the non-emergency transfer business, see what it does for our, our turnover ratio on our employees, and um and our budget, and then and then do the two-man stations, I think it might help our staffing. Um, when I say get out of the non-emergency transfer business, I don't mean get rid of those employees that, are, that you're using. Retain those employees. Retain every one of them. Right. Um, get to the 1550 mark um, and see if that helps with our staffing, helps with our budget. And, and I mean, that's just my take on it, but I'm, you know, as we all have said in the past, I'm one of five. Um, you know. Any other comment? No, sir. I, I got a uh, question. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I, Commissioner Hale. I don't disagree at all. I guess what I'm at, like, more my mind is that we're just offering this up for a study, so yes, sir. that information couldn't, I mean, if we had all of it, let's say we went for just for the information purposes, could we not on our own with the help of the, the board and the chief and all scale that back when it comes time? I mean, I'm just asking, I mean, I'm talking out loud, having all the information, and then we use our tools in the toolbox to break that back down to a smaller 
I mean, because that's a big number there. I see that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to say this. But, Chief, uh, I think you know how, how successful have we been with transport? With the non-emergency transport? Yes, sir. Um, we're, we're very successful with it as far as, as it goes. But as a county agency, we're, you know, we're not going to make the profit that a private company does off of it. Um, but we're, the biggest thing that the non-emergency transfers allows us to do is it's got 12 people on the ground and two more ambulances that are available for, the, for 911. And those employees are also available to fight fire because they are dual certified. So when they're, they're on the transfers, about 28% of the call load is transfers right now. So, so when they're- the advantage to you? So when they're having those 12 personnel, we're, we're about breaking even on transfers. So we've got 12 personnel and two ambulances on the road for the revenue that's being generated by the transfer. Is, the, is that an advantage so, to you? That's what I asked. Yes, most definitely. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm sorry. Mr. Fleming, are you done? I'm done. <coughs> Commissioner uh, Land. Mr. Mr. Hand, I have no idea. How much does a new ambulance cost? Uh, they one, one like we use. I mean, the sky's the limit, I understand. Um, most of ours are in the range of uh, two. The last quote we got was 265000 Okay. So 250000 yeah. We'll say right. two fifty. So we're 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 buying two hundred fifty thousand dollars pieces of equipment to run them up and down the road um, with fuel and at, all the added expenses, depreciation to, to break even. Um, and and I understand the equipment; it allows us to do that. But when you take into consideration, um, and, and I know the government sector doesn't do this as much, but depreciation. It, it, your fuel usage is going to go down, potentially your overtime. I mean, you, you retain the guys, you retain the equipment, and the expenses that go away, you use that to offset the cost in that ambulance, and you keep that ambulance. Um, I, I, I just think that we're, you're going to see a, a big bump in your uh, revenue side and lack of expenses while retaining every single one of those guys and, and, and the pieces of equipment and, 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 and the lack of use. You're going to get a longer life out of that ambulance, um, right? You know, I mean, that's just my take, guys. I just think that we there, there's a benefit there by getting out of that business that we I, haven't realized, or, or do, we don't even know really exactly what it is unless we go back and look at 2014 numbers. But that was another time, another day, another. I don't, I don't have a problem with having you know that discussion when we can get all the information in front of us and. I mean, I understand it's close to your heart, and you think it might be good for us to get out. And I don't have a problem with listening to those arguments. We bring it. Well, but, I mean, every. All but you need. I understand you need to. I understand you need to say what you're saying, though. To for it to be included in what and in what we're trying to do tonight. But I, I don't know if I'm making sense. But what I'm. Well, here's my thing. What I'm saying is we can't get out of that business tonight. We're trying to decide on on. I get it, but what the study is going to be, not what we're going to do, but just what the study is going to be. Correct. But GSG is going to look at this scenario here and they're going to use our current budget here. Our current budget includes all the income and expense of, of non-emergency transfers. So that number is going to look astronomically bigger as if we were to say, Hey, let's start baby steps here. Let's, let's, uh, Let's take this out of the equation for a year or two, see what, our, what that does for our budget, and, and then let's go back and look at the four-man stations. But if we take these guys off the road from running back and forth to Gainesville and Tallahassee and wherever else they may go, um, put them in the stations, retain them. I mean, don't cut their hours. Retain them. Don't cut anything. Um, and, and have the ambulances parked there as well. Let's, 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 let's try that for a minute before we aim for the stars, so to speak, keeping this in the study going to 1550 and four-man stations. I mean, somebody's got to pay for this, and it's going to be the taxpayers, and everybody in this room is a taxpayer. And, and all I'm saying is maybe we need to look at, let's, uh, let's, let's cut the pie a little bit before we start analyzing how, you know, who's going to have to pay for this. That, that's all that I'm saying. These numbers are going to be bigger because our budget is a reflection of what we're doing today, and those are the numbers they're going to look at. That's my understanding of it. Um, I, got, I got a question for... Uh, Chief Han, 
just taking to account if we did a four man or a four man station study is there a way to take that study maybe mr harris could help me understand it is there a way to take that study and understand what it would cost for two men would that give us enough information to where we could i think it was kind of what you That's was alluding where to, i was going with it and, and as if we asked for a bigger study but then we could right. we look back at it and say hey this is do we have enough documentation and information in that study to be able to break out what two would cost us and, yes the, the answer is yes and mr and, chairman on the heels of that i mean hearing what mr uh commissioner land's asking could they not incorporate that into the study that we're asking for with and without that non-emergency transport i mean the numbers are all there why couldn't they just give well, us both scenarios the chief here's what would happen we would provide the information I think what you're talking about is a range, two man to four man. Okay, typically your study would come back with a range anyway on what that budget number needs to be. And when that happens, every year after you've received that study that gives you this range, depending on the personnel that you're going to use, every year thereafter, the board decides what you're going to do during your budget workshop thereafter. So if you said, we're going to have two man stations, Two years out, three years out, four years out, you say, well, we think we're going to try a four-man station. You've already got the data, and you know where you need to be based on the study that was done. So they can create a range for you to accomplish that. On the non-emergency transport issue, I think the chief would have to try to go ahead and put numbers together on. I think you've got numbers put together on your expense side right now. Correct. Um, you were within 10000 or $12,000 or something. Yes, sir. on breaking even on that so the benefit has been that you had the extra personnel but i think what commissioner land is talking about is just separate that thing out so it isn't a part of the study is that right yeah yeah but you know that's exactly right but <clears throat> my concern with is 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 it's my understanding chief han that we determine our our expenses our expenses are all lumped into the same ems budget they're not categorized by non-emergency emergency, emergency emergency traffic crash emergency i mean they're not they're not they're just expenses all in one bucket mm -hmm. so we determine what they are for each each call based on a call load analysis well if 28 percent of our call load is non-emergency transfers then we go and take 28 percent of labor fuel insurance everything that applies to that non-emergency transfer well if a traffic crash occurs today, it's going to occur within 10, 12 miles of any station. So I'm just using that example. We'll say 10. There and back, that's 20 miles. Well, a non-emergency transfer to Gainesville is 150 miles. So to, to compare the percentage, we'll just say fuel or mileage or labor or time. I mean, that, and I know that's the way it's always been done, and it's, that's not the way that he came up with. That's the way that we've always done it. But that's not, that's not an accurate analysis of what our true expenses are because it's going to cost you a lot more fuel and time to go to Gainesville than it is to run 10 miles to a traffic incident or, you know, whatever it may be. So for me, it's hard to say. Um, I mean, we're just, it's a best guess. At what our expenses are because they're not categorized and that's that's no fault of anyone's it's just the way it is um so it, it, it's 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 i mean it's, it's a difficult nut to try to crack and you know i don't have all the answers but i mean that's just a concern i got that that we're guessing we're guessing really um and it's just a it's a best guess oh yes, i'm done oh, oh, commissioner white uh, Chief Hand, if you was to back that non-emergency transfer out just in round numbers for here tonight what what would that four man or two man minimum wage budget fifteen fifty an hour it's at thirteen point six million dollars here how much would you back out of that if you kept those employees but backed out the expenses just in round numbers and what I'm trying to get to here is fifteen fifty two man yeah And what I'm trying to get here is this is just a study, so it's just going to tell us where they think we ought to be. 
but am I right in there? There's going to be a minimum and a maximum amount that comes with this study. So is yeah. my question is taking three million dollars out versus the budget we have today of ten and a half million dollars. Is it going to make a big difference in what they come back with an assessment on? I mean, as far as the minimum, I'm where we're you, at now. I'm going to tell you what I think would be ideal. What I think would be ideal is if we can try to refine a number to the best of our ability on the cost of the non-emergency transport. I agree with you. We're guessing. But I think we need to come up with a number ourselves as close as we can get because they will rely on what we tell them. We need to come up with that. We just, I think, from the menu standpoint, you need to decide if you're going to go with two man stations at 15, and if some of you decide, well, three years out or four years out, we won't look at 14, we need to be able to tell them that so they can create the range. And then we take this other number on non emergency transport and we try to create that number reconcile it with that study and in any year you can decide you could do it in your budget workshops this year say here's the number our best guess on non-emergency transport we're going to put an end to this business but we'll have a hopefully a little bit better number than we have today um, because it doesn't have to weigh on your study with GSG uh, we need to try to isolate that number and I would like to add also, clarify, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're doing a study on six stations. Right now we got five stations. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, we're a year and a half or two years out of having six stations. So you got some inflated numbers here on this piece of paper that's really, you see what I'm saying? I mean, we need, we will get that information, but I think we need it spelled out when we do get the study that says, hey, we're two years out from this station and this amount of people is that'll well. show in that budget the proposed budget that we're going to put together is not going to show that station up and running right now um, in fact we just got that agreement um, I just got it uh, today opened it up we got the agreement on the fire station so but what I'm saying is for them with these numbers here it looks like that stations up and running. that that's correct what it looks like on this paper is that it's up and running they, they will need to reconcile that over time with the implementation and we'll we'll be telling them when we think that station will actually be up and running my question is I'm new to this so educate me when they send that study back does it start from the the option to assess start at where we are now and give you that option up to the whatever the maximum they say that is it's going to start if you tell us two man stations at 15, then we're going to go back and put that in the budget and send it to them. And we're going to tell them we want to know what the range would be to take us to four man stations at 15. And maybe that's five years out or maybe at some other time. I don't know. But they'll create the range for us. But they will start with whatever we give them to start with. And if we give them two man stations at 15, huh? 50, and that's what they're going to start with. I mean, understanding it like that, I'm fine with doing what Commissioner Land said, starting with the two man. If they can give us the range to the four man, I mean, I'm. Yeah, I'm good with that. My a question that I have for the chief here, and um, is, you know, taxpayers are going to pay for this, whatever. If it comes back twenty dollars more than we're paying now, or a hundred and fifty dollars more than 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 we're all paying now on, on a fire assessment, um, or EMS if we add one. Uh, it, what what benefit by 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 going to? I know we got to get to fifteen fifty. Everybody in the country's got to get to fifteen fifty, or everybody in the state of Florida's got to get to fifteen fifty. Um, so I understand. I'm good with that. But what benefit is the is the is the citizen that lives five miles from any station in their home? Are they going to see on their insurance policy? And their ISO rating, because my understanding is, is we got a whole another hurdle to try to overcome to, to give these folks a benefit. So for the person that's going to go from paying 130 to 300, what benefit are, am I going to be able to tell them that they're going to get out of this by having four guys versus two today? Financially today. Financially. Financially, there will be no benefit over what they have today financially right 
but if they have an emergency at their home, there's going to be someone there to respond to that emergency and possibly save them or their loved one's life. Totally understand, and and I agree with you 100%. And, and there is and no price on that. No, there's not. Sky's the limit. Price on that. Um, but but my, my other side of that is, is if we take these guys off of the non-emergencies, we may have some stations with four guys in them. I mean, you know, we may, we may, we may have two or three stations scattered across the county with four men in them, you know, doing things the way we're doing it today. Now I know we, I know we're going to, I know we got to go up. I'm not saying we're not, we don't have to go up. I'm not saying that at all. Um, and, and I'm saying, I don't want to set the parameters so high for government services group that they come back and tell us you guys need to be at $400. When I got to look at my constituents and say, we're going to go to 350, but you're, you know, it's just an insurance policy for you. You know, I can't do anything about your ISO rating. Your home orange coverage is not going to come down because we got a water issue out in Welburn or wherever you are in the rural count, rural part of the county. We don't have access to water, so you can't do anything about your ISO and your homeowners. My take on it is, like I said earlier, it's the same thing. Baby steps. I don't want. I don't <clears throat> want to shoot for the moon. I understand it's just a survey or it's just a, it's just a study. I get it, but um, and I'm not saying this board's like this or Swanee County's like this. But you give someone a loaded gun, they're usually going to fire it <laughs> until they run out of bullets. And I, I just I want to. On behalf of the citizens, limit the bullets is all I'm saying Mr. for Chairman. now. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm done. Yes, sir. I don't, Commissioner, Flint. I ain't trying to be debatable, but I'm, I'm just saying I'm looking at the long haul. I'm looking at safety, you know, lives saved. Uh, uh, I think we, you know, we talk about kicking the can down the road. I think we have dealt with this issue at one time, at one point, with the non-emergency -transport, uh, transportation. We have, uh, and then we come to this, where fire rescue started transporting, and 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 it was beneficial. So I just want to be better. I want to do better. I, I I would love for the county to be better. And you know, it's gonna come with a price, and I I understand that. Everybody, I look at me. I pay two times. I got an 85 year old mom. She she's not bedridden. She got to pay. Uh, I got family members. I got friends, and and that's what I look at. That for this county, in order to be successful, <coughs> there's some things that 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 got to change, that we got to do. I ain't trying to dig in nobody's pocket, but if you don't put, if you don't have what it takes to get the job done, you're backing up. That's how I feel now, Chief. Sure. I, I, that's just my take. That's how I feel about the situation. Mr. Chairman, one, uh, just to respond back to one, one of the questions you asked about ISO, you said today, how will it affect them financially? Mm -hmm. And today it will not. But the budgets that I have built for these scenarios have our escrow lines for equipment replacement. And it's also, in addition, adding equipment that is needed to work towards the ISO reduction that that we want to get done in the county. So the water supply project is in the in this in these budgets. Added equipment to help alleviate those issues that we've got to have and the personnel right now the personnel will not allow us to get where we need to be for those water shuttles and stuff whereas the four man stations get us a lot closer to being able to accomplish that with our with our volunteer personnel as well. So Today, and I can't promise what the time frame that would take because that's that's a that's a large undertaking, a large project. But it's definitely it's on my bucket list to try to complete before I walk out the door in retirement. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the non-emergency transfers go, um, you know, like I said before, the biggest thing is that is it's paying for the personnel that's not costing the taxpayers to pay for those personnel. The revenue that's coming in off of those is paying for those those 12 people um, and it even if we break even on it it's it's still it's those 12 people are on the ground at no no cost to the taxpayer mm -hmm. for the uh, for that to be available now the if the taxpayer uses uses the service they're going to be billed for it and their insurance is going to pay and everything else but it's not you know 
this is for the availability of it, it, it those 12 people are costing us zero. Yeah. Just, so, just so I understand <clears throat> with the non-emergency, and you're saying the, the 12 people that are on the ground, basically the benefit, if I'm understanding this the right way, the benefit to Swanee County is if there happens to be a medical emergency and they're not on a call. There's another ambulance available. That there's someone there. Right, right now, right now. I'm today, saying those people would would be going correct. to help you. If there's a fire, right. they're going to go fight fire as well. But right now today, on, I'm just, I'm on just minimum to... staff day, we have the availability. Now, we don't have the ability to put eight fire trucks and eight ambulances, but we have the ability with eight crews on a minimum staff day. That we that's that's what we consider our minimum staffing. We can't go below that. There's eight ambulances available. Now some of those stations are they're two man stations. So when they take that ambulance, there's no fire truck. Or if they take that fire truck, that ambulance isn't available. If we went to a two man station without non emergency transfers, we just went to six ambulances available in the county because there's only six station with six station added. Right now we go to five ambulances available. So so right now with with non emergency the non-emergency transfers, I can tell you, I put a lot of numbers together. The non-emergency transfers are a benefit, um, but because of those personnel that they're paying for. They're not a benefit to make money. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, that we're well, making, that's, making money off of them. We're not. But we are putting personnel on the ground at zero cost. That's, I, I just want to uh, understand that. I want the, think I want the board to understand that. I mean, when you say you don't have any cost in them, I mean, there has to be a benefit for the county somewhere, and that benefit is that they're available <clears throat> if they're not on the transport to so serve exactly. the people that want to count. And there's also another benefit to it that doesn't, that's, that's kind of an unseen and unknown benefit to most people, but in Columbia County, they have a private company that provides all of, several private companies that provide their non-emergency transport. They are having three and four hour wait times. The hospital calls me from Lake City numerous times a week to come to Lake City to get a transport because they don't have a truck available in Lake City to come get it. So our, our turnaround time here is very seldom past 30 minutes. So our, so our guy, the, we have a small 12-person e emergency room here. I can't say if a private company would come in here and have that kind of turnaround time. I just know what I see in other counties where private companies are doing it. If this ER backs up with 12 people in it, and we have another patient that needs to be dropped off of there and there's not a bed, we can't drop that patient off there. We have to go to Lake City or Gainesville or somewhere else with them because they can't handle the patient. So by getting them out as quick as we do, it keeps beds available for emergencies when they're needed. Chief. Have, have you run into any, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Have you run into any issues in recent times of that, of the hospital being that full or uh, emergency? Not very often, no. They're, they're getting busier. The, COVID slowed them down a lot, um, you know, but they're they're getting busier as time as, as it's improved and getting better. They're actually getting busier. Um, I actually met with a new ER director today. They had 80 patients the other day come through come through the hospital. They average about 50 to 60 a day, um, but they had 80 patients come through the other day. So they're getting getting busier. But if they come there, they're going somewhere. If they can't treat them and release them here, they're going somewhere else. Right. Cor correct. Uh, Commissioner Lamb. Chief, how often, how often does it require us to, how often do we upgrade our ambulances or trade them in or, or replace them? Uh, we're, we try to at least do one to two every year, but we have a fleet of 13 ambulances. So, so right now, right now I've got two primary units that, and I can't, I can't think off the top of my head what year they are, but I can tell you the mileage. I've got two primary units that are getting close to breaking 300,000 miles that are primary in service every day. I understand. Um, so, I've got backups that are all in that same mileage range. Um, I've got three ambulances. The last three ambulances that we purchased, one of them's already broke 100,000. The other ones are, um, are you know, we put, we put anywhere, even on our 911 trucks, we put 50 to 60,000 miles a year on them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, and we, once you break, once you break that 200,000 range on an ambulance, you start having problems. And it's not the problem of paying the maintenance, the problem of doing without the truck when it goes to the shop, because you got to have it on the road. I understand. I guess my, my, my point where I was going with that is, is 
we established earlier that a new ambulance is roughly two hundred fifty thousand for what we buy. Right. Um, you know, if 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 we're hitting hitting its life expectancy in three years running non emergencies, well, and you got two guys doing it, two two men doing it at we'll just say sixty thousand annual salaries each. That's one hundred twenty. Ambulance costs two fifty. Well, you you. You take those, take that ambulance out of service, and the mileage you're saving and depreciating on that asset, you can pay for two guys at sixty thousand dollar annual salary for for two years. So, I guess my whole point has been saying, <clears throat> with with the money we're going to save in some of these expenses, the the, the labor that, that you said earlier would, would was this non emergencies is allowing us to have twelve guys. Well. I mean, I'm, I would argue with you on that. I would say that maybe it's allowing us to have five guys, but the expenses that go away are going to compensate and offset some of them. Those maybe twelve five, employees cost us eight hundred thirty-one thousand dollars. Maybe a year. Eight hundred thirty-one thousand dollars annually for six. This is starting pay. Right. So at hundred thousand, I mean, you're going to get two or three of them, four, by not having to run that ambulance. Hard. I mean, that's just my point. But we're not, well, you know, I'm, uh, and we're beating a dead horse. Yeah, right. Y'all know I, where I'm at. Then, I'm ready to move yeah. on. I'm, I'm, all I need, I need direction of yeah. from we're, the menu right. that gave you well, what way to go with GSG. It, hey, we can discuss all it, this down. It's the road. fine. That's what we're here for to voice our concerns <laughs> and, and thoughts. I mean, it's it's fine that we, so we went down this road. But and give me just, a, I'll, I'll get go you. Uh, you know, obviously we will cross that bridge because I feel like it needs to be discussed and it will be discussed in a in a future meeting, but, but what's before us tonight is making a decision on this study, and we have to do that. So, uh, Commissioner Hale, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, and I, all I was going to say is your original concern was uh, having that study in here, and my original question was we have to give them a number for non-emergency to add to this study. Whether it's in there or whether it's out of there, once we get a study back, certainly we can do the math and and – Figure what it's going to cost to either do yeah, away with it or keep it going. Decide, ultimately, the board will decide what you're going to do with non emergency transport. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Mr. Sessions, would you like to have a comment before we vote on this? That's fine. Just name and address for the record. Welcome, sir. Larry Sessions, 4377 72nd Street, Live Oak. Um, I know everybody in the room, and I appreciate what everybody does. And I've always been a person that's looked at the numbers really hard, and I've been hearing a lot of this stuff going back and forth the um, last little while. And um, when you have a study done, you know, we've, I've been hearing the word best guess. And my thought is, if you separate EMS from fire and finance and you understand what each one brings to the table, then you're not guessing to start with. So if you separate it completely, then you know your real numbers, what you're spending on EMS and, and uh, the non-emergency um, transport, and you know what you're doing on fire. Right now, you've been averaging 46 fires a year. We get less than one a week. Your um, budget is, I just added it up all ago. It's, it's actually, with fire and EMS budgets together, it's a little bit over $12 million. You're asking for 13.6, which comes up to about 82% of the Avalorum taxes in this county. That's a, that's a lot of money. So you, when you're in a position to where you need to look at ways to either save or be more efficient, I'm not in favor of just stopping the non-emergent transport immediately because that's not going to fix anything right off the bat. Nope. But I'm, I would welcome a study. But when it's studied, I think it ought to be studied separate. If there's a way to pull it all out and only look at fire and only look at EMS and emergent transport, I think you've got it so combined right now, it's probably going to be hard to do. So um, I know I can think back about five years ago. I made a comment during a budget workshop. 
we were hearing there's a lot of turnover. We need more people. We can't keep them. We don't pay them enough. I came up with a figure where everybody would make 16 bucks an hour and we'd cut down the turnover. That, I don't believe it ever happened, okay? Uh, where we could get nine more people and do the same thing. Also, the water project that you mentioned, that came up to us five or six years ago and nothing ever happened. We, we, we allocated the money for the water project, but it, I haven't seen it happen yet. So there's a lot of things to look at. Um, I understand what Mr. Uh, Land's talking about. If you're running the long distance non-emergent transport, you're wearing out your vehicles quicker. And I'm not here, I'm not running for office today, and I'm not trying to get any more business for Pony Valley Transit, okay? I'm just a concerned citizen who doesn't want any more taxes. Um, and one thing, and I always do research. Right now, and I don't know if you know this, Eddie, but you're on track to be almost $900,000 of overtime this year. That's where you're at at this point. And I know that... Now, some of that is built in overtime. I understand that. I understand. We went through that a long time ago. So the, the built-in overtime is back when I was discussing this about five years ago, it was $129,000 a year. So if you take that away from the 881000 I figured up that you're going to be at this year, you're going to have $691,253 left over. And if you pay these people $40,000 a year, that's 20 more people you can get by cutting your overtime. And everybody's still making 40000 a year, which is actually – a person at 1293 makes 40,000 a year at overtime rate for 2,080 hours a year. So, and only two people in your operation makes less than 40,000 a year. So, it's one of those things where I think to understand it all, you have to separate it when you do the study. The study is the most important thing at this point, so you all know where you are. And then, when you know where you stand based on EMS and non-emergent and fire, then you'll really know where you have to work. And um, I, I just know that it's getting closer and closer to the fire department using up almost all the funds that the county gets in Avalorum taxes. And, and so that's only, only meaning one thing, taxes are going to go up. So I'm a numbers person and it's all black and white. And I believe in going to six stations too, but if you if you cut back on the non-emergent transport at five stations, you have 80 people on the payroll right now. You'd have 5.3 people per station. You could go up to you. Well, you're at 65, but you've employed 80 because of turnover and everything else. But if you could hire those other people by raising their salaries and retain them, that, that's where you want to be. So. Um, there's hope for not raising taxes if these studies come back and we give them the right information on how to look at the studies. That, that's the way I see it. Divide it up where they can focus on each side and not have the combined things where there's a lot of gray areas. You know, you let them see both sides of it. That's the way I would study it. So that's really about, about all I have. Thank you, Mr. Sessions. Thank you. I have any other questions for Chief Hand at this time? Comments? Other than I just agree with Mr. Sessions, and I've been saying it, <clears throat> you need to know what each one's doing. It's hard to it's hard to figure anything out when it's it's commingled like that. So I, I'm I'm right there with him on that point. Uh, and I understand it's just a study, and ultimately the board makes a decision on what that, that uh, assessment's going to be. So I say we just uh, we we got to pull that non-emergency transport out, and and or at least try to try to separate this before you give it to them to see where it really is. Otherwise, just like he said, it's a guess. So I would by saying that I would like to see it separated. Well, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Uh, I, 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 I see it's here, but now we did vote as a board board to do the fire study, our fire name, and then EMS on its own. So hopefully that would give us maybe some of that information that Mr. Sessions is talking about. But I think what um, Mr. White's saying is is a point that I've been saying the whole time is it's all 
it's all lumped together. And and if you hand them <coughs> a big old pile of numbers, that's all EMS and fire. They're not separated. We did we did vote on the studies to do to be done, we voted separately. Right on a right. fire and an EMS, if I remember right. But all the numbers are kind of all. I mean, they have their separate departments, but all the numbers are kind of commingled with EMS and fire. So, I mean, they're going to do two separate studies based on one set of numbers as it is right now, unless we get finance. No, to, to, to clarify that, separate. to clarify the commingling, the only thing that is commingled is my EMS divisions. Your normal EMS is one budget, and it is totally separate from fire. Fire is, is funded through the fire assessment. And it has its own separate budget, and anything to do with fire is paid from fire. Well, so EMS does have the non-emergencies. We do non-emergency and 911 transport. So that budget is one EMS budget. So yes, that is commingled together. But fire and EMS is totally separate. Yeah, I get. That's what I was talking about. Was the EMS part of it? Right. We need to separate that out between the 911 and non-emergency transport, and I think that's the numbers they were to be looking at. Right. Commissioner Hale, do you have a comment? I was just making sure I understood what you were saying. Even though it's, it, like you said, we have it here as fire and EMS, you have those two budgets completely separated. 100%. As, so when we give them the numbers that whatever one of these, right, whatever one of these um, scenarios you have, I have a budget prepared to send to them. So when they do for each one of these, that is a totally separate fire budget, and a to I'll send them my current budget, and the budget that I created was created off of my current budget, adding in percentage increases for adding a adding a six station. Some of my some of my stuff is is done by person number of personnel. I pay so much per personnel for a software agreement for our report writing software. Right. Those things were increased by adding those personnel. And then the salaries were done off of a straight finance from, from Mr. Baker's office, the salary yep. worksheet that we use in the budget workshops to calculate the salaries. So um, the numbers we'll get back from the study will be will be off real separate numbers. EMS okay. and fire budgets. I, I think that's but the, the budget be in mind. The budget is built. This scenario <laughs> is built with transfers still included in it, and the that's number the of personnel thing. with transfers okay. included in it. There that's the only go. thing it doesn't have separate. I think is what. Right. Got gotcha. you. Yep. And, and that's the, that. that's the way the budget has been built since I've been the chief. I inherited that budget. That's the way that I that I've operated it. Now we do have software programs in place to try to con to try to get those costs more accurate. Mm -hmm. But they've just been instituted last year, so the data is not there yet to be able to actually pull the truck that I, that goes to Gainesville all the time and see how much fuel it burned. I gotcha. Um, hopefully, in the future, I will. That was my goal was to get better better numbers on that. The only accurate way that I can do it right now is percentages of call load. I understand. But it's because it takes time. I understand. But I, like, like I said earlier in the workshop, gentlemen, my, my job is to give you the information and drive the ship you give me. All I need is direction of what to send to GSG so we can get this thing underway. You brought an army to make sure that we gave you the direction that you wanted. <laughs> oh, no, no. They're here to support. They, they love this department and this community, and they... Oh, I, they're in your yeah. support of me and each we, other to, you know, which, which and they're interested in what happens. Them. Which one are you going to take? No, I ain't taking none of them. All bigger <laughs> <I don't. than> <laughs> I'm proud of each and every one of them, and, 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 they, and that's something they don't get the opportunity to see this kind of stuff very often. And, yeah, we're glad to have and them. And I want them to come see stuff like this because it gives them an opportunity, hopefully one day down the road, one of them standing in my place. Can they ride with me when, the, when and, the, uh, one of the constituents <laughs> yells and bites in my ear? Absolutely. Often me and cusses me. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Mr. Chairman, if you yes, don't sir. Mind. So I, I, we've made a big circle here. I, I guess I'm back to what I was kind of alluding to before. It's just a study. It, it's to tell us where we're at, as you said, Mr. Sessions. We, you have some numbers. I guess what I'm, I'm just open to discussing with you guys is, do we just do the worst case scenario, and then we can always back that down and discuss that as a board and see where we want to go or do we go here and then try to work our way up the math either way we can either back it down or bring it up however we need to because we're just trying to decide what study we're going to do that's, that's really where we're at on this so 
Anything else? Nope, I'm done. Uh, Commissioner White? Well, that's, that's my point in the whole study thing, and I, I, I don't know, I guess I'm not making myself clear. If they start, if they do this assessment and they come back with an, <coughs> a range, I'm worried about where that low number starts. If they start at $300, do we have to do that? If, if that's what they say the minimum is, is where I'm getting at. If that's not the case, then I'm good with we don't have however to do you want to do it. Well, I, when they come back. I got you. I mean, we don't, but I know what you're saying. You're saying, you know, you don't want it to be way up here and not have nothing to choose from Correct. down here and be locked into where that's you can. My, that's yeah. my only right. concern. That's exactly that. where I was at on trying to separate this stuff and let's, let's give them a. Well, I got, let's. Uh, Let's just do let's, the math. Let's talk about it just a second, gentlemen. I got two. I need to ask a question here. I got two commissioners that I feel like are really concerned about trying to separate the emergency and the non-emergency. Is there a way to do this in this study, Mr. Harris? Yes or no? Going to cost us more money? There, there's a way to. They won't be doing that. Chief Han's going to have to do that, and his staff will have to work on that and come up with better information than we have today. That means we can't wait on software to get there. We're going to have to go through and try to make some assumptions and program something out that looks like it's a fairly accurate reflection of what it's actually costing per year. And we will share that information with GSG. Um, in my mind, you start with what Commissioner Land talked about, the two-man 1550 a station, and that needs to be, that's your entry threshold. Now. Some of you talked about four-man stations whenever, sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. And if we can tell them that we want to consider that three years out or four years out or whatever it happens to be, then they've got a range there to work with. Okay. And they can say, this is where, this is what it's going to cost to get here, and we're going to forecast you out to three years out or four years out, and then this is what we think it's going to look like thereafter. I got, I got, a, lot of, I got a lot of head nodding now, so I think we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm, oh. I'm good with that. Here's... Now, let me, let me say one other thing. They send that back, and you've got information then, and you're looking at real data, and they fork, you'll see all the formulas, how they forecast that out. You go to a budget workshop, and you say, well, I know that maybe we should be here next year, but in your budget workshop, you say, but this is, this is where we're going to be down here this year for whatever reason. At the end of the day, the board of county commissioners will decide what the budget's are going to be for fire and EMS every year going forward. It won't be the study that makes that determination. Right. The, the study so, is a, a guide that you use to justify whatever expenses that you're incurring with those departments. So where I can take a vote on this, what I'm asking you right now is you will assemble the information to divide emergency and not emergency to go ask them to put this in the study for us. That's correct. It will take you some time, but obviously you'll be able to do it. I think we'll... We're uh, getting somewhere with that. With that being said, Chair, I feel like, yes, sir. The only my yes, thing is I, I don't desire to have a building sitting there with no one there. That's why I said with the, uh, the four-man station. You're saying the new station? But, but with that being said, we're going to be way ahead of that, though, because we're a couple years out before we have it ready. Uh, and I, w I will say this, Commissioner Fleming, I'm... And I'm like Commissioner Lamb was saying, I mean, number one, we've got to get these folks some more money. I mean, yeah. that's number one. That's, that's the biggest priority is taking care of the people we got there now, taking care of these people to take care of us. And Absolutely. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, number two is, I, you know, I, I'm like Commissioner, again, like Commissioner Lamb said, I'm, I'm fine with doing the 1550 with the two-man as long as Mr. Harris has stated that we can include up to a four-man will come back in that study. Is that correct statement? If we go in there and tell them, you tell me. I, I think it, I think you would be better off tell them it's going to be at least three years or two years or something before we would contemplate doing a four-man station. I don't want to just tell them, go out into infinity. But if you said it's going to be three years before we're going to consider, and then you may want to consider, um, just implementing, you know, take one station at a time or something. I mean, you can be creative with this information. You might want to do two stations a year at four men until you get all of them done or one station a year at four men until you get all of them done going I forward. Mean, yeah, I mean, 
obviously we're going to have to increase people at some point. That doesn't mean it's this year, next year, when it is. Mm -hmm. This is to understand what that's going to cost as we look way into the future. Uh, but as long as I'm clear on what we're talking about, getting the information on non-EMS and EMS, doing the study on the 1550, starting at the two-man and working up and requesting the four-man, I feel like that's what <coughs> Commissioner Fleming, I feel like that's, that's what you <coughs> was thinking. I mean, uh, so right now what I'm seeing, would you offer that in the form of a motion? Yes, sir. He's going to say, can you repeat that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, five minutes. Just, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, before you make a motion, you know, the, the information that GSG wants is our current budget and then a proposed, um, you know, 21-22 budget and basically our five-year plan. That's, that's one of the other things that they request. These budgets are built basically as our five-year plan so that I've done. So to get what you guys are asking for, I think, is not going to be an issue out of this study. We just need the starting, starting point for the 21-22 budget is, where, is what we need that direction on. And then the other stuff can be added as this, this is our five-year plan or our three-year plan or whatever. Well, I think we're fairly confident now that it's going to be two man at 1550 to start with. With right. five stations. Because with, that's all you got. That's have. all we got with five stations. With five stations. Right. And then we want that to tell us what it looks like into the future as you Moving want forward to man with up. The six man, right. And then in the meantime, you'll be circling back around and studying the non emergency. And obviously, if it's not beneficial and, and it shows that, then we have to address that. But I don't, I don't have a problem in the world. <laughs> Doing that as we move forward and understanding, it's it's about numbers. Like, like uh, Mr. Session said, it's not rocket science. It's Mr. adding and subtracting. Mr. Okay. Chairman, yes, sir. Just just um, to be clear with Mr. Harris and, and to Chief, I, I I don't I don't want to. Me personally, I want to stay that. I want to keep the the pay rate at the. I'm looking at this, and everybody out here can't see this, but I want to skip option three. I want the pay rate to stay at 1550 because we know we got to get there. We know that's a number that we have to achieve in five years. Mm -hmm. So skip that middle one where it says 1290 pay rate four man stations. I mean, I don't, I don't want to spend any money for on to GSG for them to tell us something that we know is in three years going to be something that we, right. we're trying to get away from. I, I agree. You understand? Yes, sir. I do. I didn't know if we, this was. We were going to do option two, three, and four. I'd rather just no, do option I, I, three and stay at 1550. What I envision is starting with five stations, two man stations at the 1550, and then our outer range would be four man stations at 1550, and we'd have six stations at that point. Yeah, the state of Florida's pushed in us there, so we might as well just forget yeah. about the 1290. Yeah, and yeah I mean, you're at, like you're at item two and four. I mean, we're choosing yeah. between two and four. Yep. And I, I feel like but, we're. No, but if, if what they're saying is if we choose two and we ask for in three to five years that study to give us option four, that they'll build that in there. Correct. That's, that's good enough that's for me. A, yeah. I mean, that's what I was trying to get I at from mean, the beginning. So. I just wanted it to yeah. look, look, I just wanted to, to see what that, those because they're going to tell us what your assessment range was going to be. My whole point was is, is looking at what it would look like without the non-emergency transfers and all of those expenses because if, if we include them, like Commissioner White said, that minimum is going to be here. If we if we see what that assessment is going to look like by taking non-emergency transfers out, that minimum is going to be down here. You know, so we're, we're going to do our best to put additional information together that gives us a clearer picture than we have today on the non-emergency transport side, so that we can take it out. Okay, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I can make a motion for you if you'd like that we use GSG to do option, I'm gonna call them option two and option three, 1550 pay rate, starting with two man stations, with five stations, moving um, toward four man stations in the future, um, and separating the budget numbers out to when they run their numbers. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, separating with EMS, non-emergency, non -emergency, and then fire, fire EMS, emergency or fire emergency however they 
separate those right. two numbers that they run their analysis. That's a heck of a all. motion you got going on there. <laughs> you all got to be confused on that one. You we said option it. three, but, but not three. to repeat. Yeah, well, Eddie said three. Yeah. Four. Yeah, I think you wanted four. four. Yes. Two going to four, okay. Yeah. Well, I meant two stations going to four-man stations. Right. Yes. At but you 15. said two and three, and that'd back them down to 1290. That's right. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Option so, two and option four. Yes, sir. So I have a motion by Commissioner Land. If everybody understands that, I'll second it. I have a second by Commissioner Hale. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. We will interpret your motion and we will communicate that to yeah. the SG. The clerk's got it on video, <laughs> so you might have to watch that for a minute. But. And I have good direction. I under, understand it well. No, we got you. <clears throat> Mr. Hancock, name and address, sir. Bo Hancock, 6135 Wiggins Road. Um, when you're talking about this in five years, you know, you always talk about getting the can kicked down the road. You've all seen that aluminum can that's been run over two or 300 times on the, on the side of the road. Well, fire and EMS, or the, at least the fire assessment side of it, has been kicked down the road for five years. It has not gone up. You had that rain. And I think it started at $100, and the top was $118. That can has been kicked down the road, and it's flat. You can't kick it anymore. You're going to have to do something. We're taking, and I'll disagree with Larry a little bit, it's not, fire is not funded from ad valorem taxes. It's funded by the assessment. So you're not talking about 82% of the future ad valorem. And even that is wrong because fine and forfeiture gets 50% of the ad valorem tax money. Okay? So, uh, so the more information you have, the better you're going to be. The separating out non-emergency transfers from 911 transfers is good. It should have been done that way all along. But you've got dual certified personnel. Now, how in the world can you separate out if one crew, non-emergency transport crew, responds to a house fire? How in the world are you going to calculate that? It doesn't happen every day. There's a lot of unknowns. And y'all have sat up here and discussed and discussed and discussed. All you have to do is let Chief Han and his staff work on separating the non-emergency transports from the 911 transport. I think he is capable of doing that. But I'm going to tell you right now, you can have all the information in the world at right at your fingertips. And if you're not willing to tell we the taxpayers, we cannot fund the Cadillac or the Rolls Royce of fire rescue services. We can't fund it. But we can give you something that is not rock bottom. It's not the Yugo. You're going to get into the Fords and the Chevys and the Dodges. Middle of the road. If you get there, you will solve your problem. If you don't get there, you're going to kick the can. But it's got to be a new can. Because the one you, that's been kicked off for five years with nothing going up on the assessment. No. This board is going to have to make a decision. Prior boards. And I've talked to several of y'all, and I've heard it before. The previous commissions did that. Well, you're not a previous commission. You're the one we're looking at today. And I'm going to tell you, the more information you can get out of this study, the better off you're going to be. But if you try and kick the can down the road, I'm going to be back up here again. I'm a retired firefighter paramedic from Jacksonville. You're always welcome, and, Mr. Hancock. And I've been, no, I live here now. 
You're always These looking. are the people that's going to come to me. Because mm -hmm. I ain't doing it. I retired, and three days later, I forgot everything I knew. Mm. <laughs> we appreciate your comment, sir. But that's, you don't want to see me back. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Bove. Is Mr. Meeks in the room? Okay, I got you. I just wanted to make sure I didn't see you. Uh, at this time, we got to back up for a second and go to a time specific. I have it 6.05 p.m. or soon thereafter, item number 11. As the matter can be heard, hold a public hearing to consider adoption of a resolution approving special permit for temporary use request number SPTU-21-04-01 by American Promotional Events DBA. TNT Fireworks to be granted a special permit for temporary use under Section 1410 of Swanee County Land Development Regulations for a fireworks tent sale to be held starting June 21st, 2021 through July 5th, 2021 on property zone commercial intensive, Mr. Meeks. Okay. At, at this time, I'll open this public hearing. I'm sorry. Uh, County Attorney, swear, you swear us in. All righty. Thank you. If there's anybody here uh, that thinks that they may give testimony uh, regarding this matter, would you please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn? All right. Seeing none but Mr. Meeks, do you swear or affirm the testimony you give before the board this evening will be the truth to help you God? I do. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman and board members, I'll try to be brief. Um, I think this is the ninth time that this group has submitted an application that's come before the board for their temporary use permit approval. Um, they are planning to hold a fireworks tent sale beginning June 21st, 2021, and it would run through July the 5th of 2021. It is a temporary use permit. Typically, they hold their events twice a year in July and January for the first of the year and fourth of July event. Um, location of the property is out there in the uh, Walmart Shopping Center Plaza parking lot area they do set up a temporary tent um, along with the uh, special permit for temporary use that the Board of County Commissioners usually considers they also do a permit application through Tim White and he does a inspection there to make sure that their safety protocols is all met um, the uh, application did go before our planning and zoning board last week at their uh, April 29th meeting the recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners was for approval so we have a resolution prepared uh, in your packet for approval if the board so chooses to approve their request. At this time, I'll enter the file into the record. Can I accept the file as composite exhibit number one? Thank you, Mr. Meeks. At this time, do I have any questions from the board for Mr. Meeks concerning this issue? How many years did you say they've been to the same people? It's probably been about four or five years that they've done it, but this is like the ninth event that they do it because they do it twice a year. No problems. No, we've never had any complaints from them. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve. Oh, I got to open. Oh. Hold on just a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> any, other, any other questions from the board? At this time, I'll open the floor to public comment. Is there anyone wishing to speak about this matter? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Seeing no further board discussion, now I'll ask for that motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve this permit. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Land, a second by Commissioner Fleming. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Before Mr. Meeks leaves, I just, um, just kind of a selfish thing here. I just want to throw something out. We got a lot of great teachers in our uh, community. Uh, his wife is one of those teachers, and I was able to see the impact that a teacher has on a student. And I just want to tell her thank you. Awesome. I appreciate Make it. Sure I'll, she knows I'll that. relay that to her. I'm yep. sure she'll be appreciative. Thank you. This being Teacher Appreciation Week, so I will yep. let her know. And I appreciate all of them, but I, your wife is one of a kind. So we appreciate, appreciate that. Yep. You want to buy her some fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> when they get there. <clears throat> At this time, I'm going to take a five minute recess and then we'll come back and get into solid waste discussion. Thank you. A little bit longer than five minutes, but we're back going here. Uh, piece of paper back to item number 13 at this time we will discuss solid waste disposal mr. Harris mr. chairman commissioners if you could wait just a few more minutes we've got all of our firemen out there putting t-shirts on that say solid 
uh, Swanee County solid waste, and we're going to bring it back. <laughs> they going to come back in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lord have um, mercy. In all seriousness, we provided information to you previously. We had a workshop, had a lot of discussion, and similar um, similar to what we need to do with GSG, we have got uh, with them with fire information. We've got to do something with solid waste. Um, I've provided this information to you previously in your last meeting. I just need to go through it with you tonight. Uh, for those that are not aware, we did bid our solid waste. Uh, we had bid it in 2014. We had good rates with uh, waste management. Um, the most recent rates put us at uh, doubling, almost doubling, and well, not quite doubling, but a huge increase in the uh, cost for disposal at a regional landfill. Um, in fact, over the next five years, that additional expense is over $5 million. Um, over a $1 million a year going forward uh, over what we currently spend in disposal. In addition to that, we had showed you a document uh, in the combined budgets of solid waste collection and disposal. We've been running a nearly $300,000 deficit uh, revenues versus expenses every year. Also gave you information on the forecast, uh, what it's going to cost us for implementation of the minimum wage mandate over the next five years. You have that. I provided information on what I'm going to call um, a variable. This is something that the board will have to decide on, and that was the issue of transitioning those collection sites to the compactors and the enclosed containers um, because we are pretty well loaded up with eight yard. We used to have six and eight yard containers in the collection sites. Now we've pretty much gone to all eight yard containers except for a few smaller ones for handicapped uh, customers to be able to uh, use. But we're packed out with those green boxes. Um, and high volume waste handling, you don't do it with dumpsters, eight yard containers, you do it with larger compactors. The trucks that it takes to service that are much less expensive and they last a great deal longer. Um, but you'll just have to decide ultimately. So you are going to have an additional expense of over a million dollars a year for disposal. At this point, that isn't optional. I showed you some escrow numbers. Um, that was just for information and here for replacement of equipment. We've got to make up for the deficit um, that we're running right now and the minimum wage implementation. So really the question that I need answered this evening is whether or not you want to go ahead and begin this transitioning of those collection sites. That's uh, my estimate is $528,000 a year for the next five years, doing about three sites per year, self-performing a lot of that work and then buying the equipment that it's going to take to accomplish that. One thing you don't have here is the, as we begin that transition, if we go to those collection sites with the compactors, um, we would discontinue the current practice of buying all those dumpsters every year. The large enclosed containers last a great deal longer. So do you have any questions or do you understand what I'm asking? How many of those eight yard containers are we buying? Per year now, many. I couldn't begin to tell you how many. I mean, we buy a pile of them. Sometimes a couple semi loads a year. They just rust out. The problem with those eight yard containers is they're open. So, mm -hmm. at the landfill, you're trapping leachate and you're piping it into a big tank and then taking it for treatment. And your collection sites, you're creating leachate right there on the site because it's raining right in those containers, running through all that garbage and leaking out all over the place. Well, it right. it it's That's corrosive and it right. rots out the bottom of those dumpsters in just a couple well. of years. Yeah, I will. So we've been in the business of rebuilding the bottoms of dumpsters forever, and they just don't last. We get in the rainy season, we're paying to haul off water, too. That's right. I, I mean, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's about dollars and cents every day here, but yeah. I want to I get out of this dump can business and get into the compactors. I had a discussion with the board about four years ago. I don't know. How many of you were here at the time? Commissioner Fleming was here. But we had a workshop about this, and I shared at the time that our volume was getting so great 
that we're going to have to do something different. In fact, our volume is increasing right now by about 2,000 tons per year, every year. Um, so it's going up quickly. And my idea back then was to try to get ahead of it and start managing that um, volume more efficiently. And it is a lot more efficient. The front load garbage trucks picking up dumpsters, they stay in those sites for a long time trying to empty all those cans. With the roll-off truck, uh, roll-back truck and the larger containers, they can be in and out of there in 10 minutes or less. And they're just a lot more cost-effective from an operational standpoint once you're set up that way. So basically to be able to move forward, you got the you have to know if the board chooses to want to include this or not include it. That's correct. Everything else, I mean, there's nothing else on there that's really optional. Right. Everything else is just a part of doing business. But the option that you have in here that I'm asking you to make a decision on is that of going ahead and beginning the transition. And again, this would take, I'm believing, five years to do um, at those numbers. All right, gentlemen. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Could we, I mean, this is a question for Mr. Harris. Is there a way, would it be beneficial to us as a county to put one of our first compactors at the collection site um, to, to maybe eliminate some of the excess liquids and whatnot? And, and I mean, I don't, would, at which sooner than later? No, at, at, the, at the transfer station, I'm sorry. Right. I, I misspoke. At the transfer station to, to you know, all this, because all we got, if we put one there, if, I think this is three, three uh, sites a year. If we well, put no, one there, we could essentially do all sites. Yeah, the compactor, the compactors are actually at the sites, the collection sites. I guess that was my question. I'm, I'm still educating myself on garbage, but. So here's what we would do. Um, the proposal would be to go to, each year we would go in and try to retrofit three collection sites. And what that retro fit would look like is you'd have two large 40-yard containers that are enclosed, totally enclosed, with two compactors. Um, you'd have to do it in duplicate so that, you know, you shut one down and open the other one when I'm full, and then you service the cans when during lunch or sometime you just close the gate for a few minutes. But you'd have two compactors and two large containers at each collection site. So you would do three sites one year and then move to the next three the next year, and it, over five years we'd get all of them taken care of. So then you pull those cans, and this, you know, may be a discussion later if we decide that we're going to direct haul or something. But otherwise, you would take those cans to the transfer station, open the gates, dump them on the floor, and then load that waste into a semi-trailer to be hauled to the regional landfill. My question was if it was, again, I'm not a garbage expert, but if we did one of those compactors at the transfer station, would it help any situations for the sites, the other sites that weren't going to have a compactor as far as maximizing our tonnage on what we're hauling? Because we're all, let's just say, my whole district gets no compactors. Just as an example, we get none in, their, in District 3, but all of our garbage and our collection sites going to the transfer station not compacted. If, the, if we put a compactor there, would that maximize the tonnage due to it would compressing a, the – no. would it help us any? It, it wouldn't help us any because we're putting everything we can on those trailers now. And uh, I don't know just by running it through a compactor how much space you gain and, and what the trailer weight-wise, DOT restrictions, if it would help us any to maximize – minimize our freight, maximize our load is where I was going with that yeah. on, the, on the sites that didn't have a compactor. That's, that was just – a thought that I had maybe you know put a little more weight on the truck due to the lack of space if we had another compactor at a trans at the transfer station where all the garbage goes anyway just a thought uh, Commissioner Hale I, I was just gonna say I think I understand what what Mr. Land saying is, is start there and as we work to the last one that can be moved out to the last collection yeah site. If, it was, if, it was, if it was movable you I know, got you. just to, I don't know really I, I'm not clear on what we gain how much we gain mm -hmm. as far as compacting it compressing it and getting rid of liquid eliminating you know they throw a steel can in there that's this big well if that runs how much space that takes up and and if we you know we're gonna we're gonna be paying freight on this so I want to get as much on that truck as you will allow 
So if we run everything through a compactor, it's going to compress everything. If we're only going to do three sites a year, and we got how many sites in the county? Fourteen. So there are going to be 11 sites that aren't going to have a compactor, but if we're compacting the trash there at the transfer station, since we're going to pay this higher freight, maximizing my load. That, that's where I'm going with it. I but I don't know the, I don't know the answer. Compaction, though, by the time you unload those cans and then load it into a semi, you're going to lose... I mean, it's already been compacted at that point. Even your front load trucks or the yeah, I mean, rams are compacting it. But packing it in tight. By the time they dump it, you're losing some of that. I mean, I understand what you're saying. That'd be great if we could, if we had trailers with compactors and we didn't have weight restrictions out there. We could just keep on running. Well, I think I think by the time it's compacted in the front loaders and dumped out, I think as big as tall a size as the trailers has, I think you're getting the weight on there before the you're getting the bulk on there. So uh, uh, yeah. what I'm saying is they're leaving there with a full load. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not a professional in garbage. I was really just a question, educate myself on if it was, a, you know, a good move or not. I, I will enough. tell you, though, from the collection site, site standpoint, you know, you've got sites out there today that uh, we've got anywhere from 25 to 30 cans now. And really, you, you all are aware that we're just about maxed out with the amount of room that we have. But... One of these compactors with a 40-yard container will displace about 20 dumpsters. I mean, that's huge when it's compacted. But then again, we're going to go dump it and put it on a semi to get it out of there. All right, gentlemen, y'all pull your mics up tight and let's talk about it. Tell me what's on your mind. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Did, so you're just wanting to include this in the study is what we're doing with the compactors is what we're asking for. Well, if, if you decide that you're going to go with the compactors, what we're doing with this information is putting it in a budget, a proposed budget for next year. It'll okay. go to GSG, and then they'll program this thing out for us. Did did we get any numbers back on what a potential landfill would look like, cost-wise? I do have some numbers. They were Is it frightening. Well, it can be programmed out. No, it isn't horrible. I mean, it's doable. Clearly, people are building landfills. Okay. It isn't the price, it's the it's the frustration that you go through trying to get it permitted. Um, their numbers, I, I think the numbers were conservative, and I think that, and I haven't spoken to them, they emailed them to me. I, I'm still believing that it's going to be somewhere between, I, I think a low end would be five hundred dollars to $550,000 an acre up to $800,000 an acre. And I think you'd have to start with at least a 10-acre cell. Um, and then you construct it in such a way that they overlap as they go because you're building a base that you will later create more airspace for. Um, their numbers, I think, were a little bit low because they didn't consider the on-site improvements, the other on-site improvements aside from the construction of the cell itself because you'd have to buy enough land to do that and you'd pave the road coming in and have a scale house and other things associated. <clears throat> I, I was just curious. I, I'll be glad to talk about it. Yeah, I'll be glad to share that with you all as well. And that's that's something, you know, when I am able to obtain other information that we've talked about as alternatives for disposal long term, that is one of the things that I'll bring back to you in addition to some of the others that we've already discussed. What's your thoughts, Commissioner White, on the compactors? Oh, I, I'm I'm good with the compactors. I mean, I think that's a great idea. Uh, and are we talking about direct hauling with these compactors, or are we just going to haul it to the transfer station at that point? We're going to haul it to the transfer station for now. The other, some of those alternatives that we've talked about, when we are able to obtain the information we need on some of those, we may then resurrect the conversation on maybe a direct haul. There aren't very many places right now that that would be advantageous to consider, but there may be one that it might be advantageous. It just depends. Well, I, Another option would be that we look at maybe doing a shuttle. Now, if we did a direct haul ourselves, we and I think in one of these scenarios I told you, I had a footnote in there that said that we might need a third one as we start building out roll-off truck. If we had that third roll-off truck and just had somebody run on a shuttle, we could take those containers and just haul those direct with another rollback truck. Um, 
and that's something we could consider. I'll just have to run all the numbers on that. Well, on the semis that are hauling it from the transfer station to the landfill, it's about 80 yards is what they're hauling, roughly? I think so. Two of those compactors yeah, would equal that, one semi? That, that's about right. By the time you dump it out, it's probably about 80 yards. They're calling for a 100-yard trailer. Yeah. But it's probably realistically about 80 yards on that. Can, can, Mr. Chairman, can you buy – are 80-yard compactors available? You just have to go with 40? 40. Because I was thinking larger. if we do direct haul, if we got an 80 yard container, you pick it up, you maximize it, roll with it. and roll with it. It would be too heavy just the truck. The, won't haul it. the truck won't Over haul eight. it because it's just sitting on the truck. It's too long. It'd on be long. Trailer. Yeah, it'd be really long. Um, be great if you could stack one on top of another and carry them and dump them out, and then you could get your. You got to a bridge. I've done that. <laughs> well, I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> that unloads it real quick, doesn't it? Very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I would come the, um, at then with DOT. But um, um, going back to, to the compact, Mr. Harrison, I went to Madison, and I think it worked wonders for them over there a few years back. Had, and it was exciting the way it worked. Well, something similar to what the front load trucks that we got to where squeeze all of it up, compact it together, then push it out at the lift station. If you had one at the lift station to, to, to do the processing and the squeezing it all out, then I think it would be lesser. I think that's where, that's where you're going, Commissioner Lynn, if we had, had it compacted there, it would be good that, you know, at several places, but especially at the at the at the uh, lift at the out there at the landfill, um, I would be in favor of a compactor. We we got to do something with garbage, and uh, as Mr. Hancock said, we always use just kicking it down the road. We got to start somewhere. And uh, no, you should have stayed Chairman. here with us and helped us get through this too. <laughs> He's out there trying to get that T-shirt. He, <laughs> he slipped out on us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I will tell you, the compactors themselves actually are bolted to the concrete at the sites. The containers, the 40-yard containers, are the mobile part of that. You back them up, drop that box, and fasten it to the compactors. Um, the compactors are end-to-end, -end facing opposite directions. Traffic goes up both sides, and they're dumping trash in, and they drive on out, and then the operator hits a button and it, that ram pushes that waste into that container. When it's full, you just open the other one. You only operate one at a time. It's a whole lot more efficient. Any other questions for Mr. Harris at this time? Y yes, one, just one more. Yes, sir. Under, under var variables and important considerations, you got discontinued county commercial dumpsters. Is that something that's we're that's looking at in, in this assessment? Not, or? not tonight, no. No, I mean as far as no, every, everything else is going to remain the same for now. That's something that uh, it'll go in. It's in the budget the way that it is today because we're showing those other sources of revenue. But we will come back and have another workshop at some point, and we'll talk about not only that, but we'll also talk about trying to police the waste that's coming in and who it's coming from, what county it's coming from, <laughs> and some of those other issues that we've discussed in the past so this here the, 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 the question on the table is are is this board satisfied with these numbers doing two trucks three compactors um the you know the containers the items that i see here and giving that information to gsg letting them know this is what we want to do and this is where we want to be with the three sites per year you know 14 sites uh, two trucks. This, that's that's the question on the table. Right. Are we good with that? Yep. Okay. And the other stuff, like Mr. White just said, Commissioner White, um, no other variables are going to change. Like we're not. We're going to have a discussion at a later date about the commercial dumpsters, the um, the entry cards, or you know, right. policing the the, the non-residents. I mean, all yeah. that's a discussion at a later date. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Any other questions this time? Discussion? Do I have a motion for so or against adding the collection compactors? So move. Motion for? Yes. I have a motion in favor of the compactors by Commissioner White. Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, gentlemen. So that's all you needed for the that moves ahead to the study. That's right. Yes, sir. At this time, we will move ahead to item 16. We have one additional agenda item. That is to authorize payment for the fire and EMS studies from, from the fire and EMS contingency lines and authorize finance to release payment. Any questions for Mr. Harris? Or do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Fleming. Second. Second by Commissioner White. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask the board to consider one additional item, which is really just authorization. And I'll, let me explain. Um, Commissioner White and I went down and observed that crusher. Um, it was really impressive. And I know Commissioner White has had an opportunity now to speak to some other um, entities and other locations who have had that in operation for quite some time. They're very satisfied with the way it operates. We've been budgeting for a crusher and at the time we thought, my hope was that maybe it was already on a Sheriff's Association contract or source well or something else and it isn't. So my request would be that um, I'd be authorized to go ahead and bid that item. We have budgeted for a couple of years. We've got two thirds of the money I think that it's going to take to get there. Um, but I need to go ahead and bid this thing. I don't even have a budget number now to do anything with and I'd like to get that information so that we can come back and talk about it. But I need to bid it in order to accomplish that. You just need authorization to go to bid mm -hmm. on right. a new crusher? Right. I make a motion to approve that. I have a motion by Commissioner Land. Second. Second by Commissioner White. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Any other items, Mr. Harris? No, sir, that's all. Seeing none at this time, we'll move out on, on to item number 17. That is, uh, I'll open the floor to public comment. If you have anything wishing to speak tonight on any item, you're welcome to make your way to the podium at this time. Is he public? This was for the public, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting until they rush up here. In this, <laughs> at this time, is at this time I'll close public comment. Now, welcome, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Greg Scott. One, <laughs> uh, just wanted to, in light of the uh, governor's order yesterday, uh, we've been holding rentals and and, and activities to half capacity. Uh, it's my understanding that that has been lifted now by the governor, so. I would request a nod from y'all that we need to move forward and rent what we need to rent and do new business as we need to. Yes, sir. I have consensus of the board? Yes, sir. Yes, yes Seeing sir. that, you have? Mr. Prevett, is that correct? I don't have a problem with it. I don't think the governor's order went all of that way, but I don't have a problem with it. We haven't been doing the cutbacks in anywhere along the way anyway, so I'm fine. With the rental, the rental facilities we we had been, so. Go ahead. I think the board, you have consensus to move forward, good as you see. Just use good judgment. That's yes. all we ask. I try to. <laughs> right. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Jimmy Norris to make his way to the front. Is he here? Uh -oh. There he is. I'm used to seeing you in the back. I'm looking in the back. <laughs> I thought we were going to get out here by 7. You invite this guy up here. Well, you are in the morning. <laughs> yes, sir. Name and address? Jimmy Norris, 18152 136th Street. Well, welcome, sir. Good to be here. What's that for us? Ooh. Looking for a little, just as much as you can say, uh, which is probably nothing. Good heads up there, boss. Yep. Um, Dang, I'm like being put on the spot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think he just said everything he could say. That's probably. Uh, I, uh, I guess we're referring to uh, uh, we we did um, 
Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, we we. Two eighty eight is there? Uh, yeah. Dude, can, can he come up with me? He's. Uh, he's, he's over just there for just you. A, kind of a generic update. Um, uh, the chairman was 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 out the other day, so he wasn't able to to assist me. But but uh, the vice chair was Commissioner Hale. Uh, we we did have uh, real good inquiry of someone looking in the area. Um, and uh, the nice thing about it is they're looking kind of, they're not looking at five states. They're looking along the I-10 corridor. So, um, and it is it is a project that, um, you know, as, as Mr. Pratt mentioned, we are bound by NDA on. Uh, that did come down through our regional organization and we have those documents in the office. But uh, I guess just to fill you in, you know, we, we, we were able to go out to the, the Catalyst site. They are looking at some property out there and uh, this project could be coming back to us. Uh, it's being very highly, highly contested by counties adjoining us that are. Uh, we're, we're having a fight, guys. They're, make, they're, making, they're making it tough, uh, yep. making it real tough, but it's a very legitimate project uh, with Commissioner Hill being at the site and meeting them personally. He is, has firsthand knowledge. He has met the owners. Uh, and he knows uh, all the details pretty much on the project. So uh, we're working. Uh, it was good to see. I'll be perfectly honest, when we first pulled up, we took them down that two-mile dirt road. They got out of the car, and their first word was, we're not interested. Uh, so then we told the tractors and bulldozers and up trucks to get out of the way, and we drove down to the <laughs> road, and we said, what if you look from this way? Well, maybe we're interested. So uh, the road is vital. To, to not only this project, but other projects. Uh, been making, I know that Kenny's been doing a lot of work out there, getting that thing kind of up. It's, you know, I know we've been through some tough times out there, but that park is of, of uh, great importance to us. And um, so it's real. Um, we may be coming back to you guys. We may, we may, we may not. It, it, it's very active right now. Uh, as of today, I got word we're still in the running, but they're going to want to know what we're willing to do to work with them, and, and it's going to take um, it's going to take some doing. But um, yeah, I'm well, and I appreciate you getting out. I didn't mean to put him on the spot, but what he just alluded to, guys, is that that rail crossing going in, uh, us getting the t the water tower painted. I mean, they even made mention of that. How unpleasing it was to the eye. I mean, there's just little things like that. I do think we need to keep working towards out there because this was my first-hand knowledge of dealing with a company like this that things we ride by we don't think about you know I mean just a simple thing mm -hmm. uh, but they pay very close attention to these things and uh, if we're going to continue to attract those type of businesses we need to keep working on building that facility out and, there. and you're right we we kind of uh, it's like when you ride down the same road every day you kind of get immune to some of the surroundings Absolutely. around you. You don't even notice it. And then someone else really drives down that road and they, they notice it. And it's pretty obvious that these people are kind of meticulous. They're very, very. In, in their business, uh, uh, the small details meant a lot. They picked up on a lot of things that, uh, you know, they were asking about, you know, the, the road. And and uh, I think if I remember right, they, there was about 20 trucks a day would be coming in and out, semi-trucks a day to this facility. Um, so um, they were wanting to be sure the road was going to be able to, to, to handle the truck traffic. They were interested in, of course, the rail. They the were rail. interested in uh, what the finished piece was going to look like of the park. You know, when you, when, uh, you turn into the park, uh, was there going to be nice signage that said, you know, catalyst site? I mean, these are all things that... that when, when the commissioner is talking that he heard, you know, when we were looking at, they, I think they want to be sure if you hadn't been out there, you know, it, it was just kind of barren land at one point and all the clearing. So, I mean, it, it, we've not got to the point yet where you go in and it's all dressed up and the, you know, the, the, uh, I'm thinking right away is grassed and it's pretty and yep. there's a nice sign. And, and so I think, I think where, where we were kind of going with it was they kind of noticed and they had all these questions and, and a really big thing that I know Mr. Harris was trying to shoot for didn't quite work out was, you know, turn lane going in. Uh, they were very inquisitive about if we thought that would be something. I mean, maybe not today, but 
were we looking at working towards that extending that turn lane for all those trucks that they would have? Yeah, let me speak to that real quick. I've spoken to DOT a number of times. I tried to get that done when they were redoing right. 90, mm -hmm. but that didn't work. So um, recently had a conversation with them about a study. They were going to go ahead and do a study on that, but they've decided to wait because they were doing a study on 169th or 8th, whatever it is right there, that we already rebuilt right. that crossing. They're waiting until we get 175th finished now. So that they can conduct their study for them to go in and do the turn lanes right because we're asking them to fund that at this point well that was and i knew you had worked on that and 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 so we 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 told them it was definitely on our radar and of course once that traffic started coming in and out and we may we may not we may not win you know uh, but the good news is at least people are noticing and uh, this is a very real project so i'm gonna probably be politicking real hard so uh, your phone's going to be ringing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your update, Mr. Norris. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll go to uh, closing comments. Mr. Pavat, you have anything additional? Uh, no, sir. Not Thank at this point. You. Thank you, sir. We trust you'll update us during the week if you find yes, some diff additional information. Yeah, I apologize for my phone ringing. That was actually the governor's office call, and the, I'm going to get with him on some other stuff later on. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Harris. Um, I just, yes, I want to just comment on one thing. Uh, Mr. Hancock asked a question before the meeting about a particular issue that we had discussed to save some money. I want to know if we had implemented, done some improvements to get that underway on the property over there that we bought um, and that of moving the road department. Uh, I told him, and I'll share with you, uh, some of you know this, there are a number of items in any given year that we will hold off on spending money on and doing the improvements if we see adjustments in our budgets where we've maybe paid for something an example would be the parking I mean the, the paving out there at the landfill uh, we budgeted for leachate tank replacements and some paving but when the bid came in for the paving we took money from leachate tanks to cover that additional cost so we're holding off on that You'll see items uh, that may run two or three years. It depends on other priorities that come up or, you know, last year with the COVID virus and uncertainty about revenues and even in the early parts of this fiscal year, we've held off on some things as well. That will happen from time to time. Um, and it's done very intentionally, to be honest with you, so that we can make sure that we're not going over a department budget. Um, but in this particular case, we've and on the property out there, Mr. Bravat and I have been working with uh, Duke Energy on getting an agreement together to get that power line easement moved over to the east and out of the way. And that's going to be advantageous once that's, once that's completed so that we can then go ahead and plan everything out on that property. I just wanted to mention that, and that's all I had. Thank you, sir. Uh, closing comments? Commissioner White. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Fleming. I'm good. Yes, sir. Commissioner Land. Um, yes, sir. I would a couple things. Um, thank Eddie and his guys for showing up. We appreciate him. Um, Eddie does a good job for us. And I appreciate his diligence on, on preparing these numbers. I know he spent a lot of time with Mr. Harris and, and himself, and it's a lot of work. Right, Chief? <laughs> they all start to blur together. Um, but I want to uh, thank them and, and Mr. Harris and your staff working on this solid waste stuff. We got, we got two big problems this county's been facing, and, and it's landed in this board's lap to fix it, and I appreciate all y'all coming together and try to figure out what's best for us. Um, secondly, I will, I will share some information with you guys that I've been uh, following pretty closely. Commissioner Fleming myself, and myself and Commissioner White went to legislative days um, in Tallahassee a couple months back. Um, I asked the DOT secretary, the state of Florida DOT secretary, in a, in a, public, in a, in a forum about scrap and scop, and um, there were some misunderstandings there that he had about those two programs from from his department heads across the or his secretaries across the state. We got that cleared up, um, but what I will tell you is is we fell a little short on the scrap and scop. But I've been emailing our senator um, back and forth pretty frequently, and um, there's some there's some there's some big money coming to DOT um, from the feds. And we, we need to get together as a board and um, 
get some of our projects where they're bam, bam, ready to go. Um, it's going to happen. There's, there's, and, and the ones that are ready, uh, as far as documentation and some other protocols, might get some attention a lot sooner than five years from now. Um, so I'd just like for us to start talking about that and coming up with some, you know, going through our capital improvement projects and start prioritizing them and start getting a little bit of work done on those. It, it's that's that scrap and scott fell short, but there's a windfall coming from the feds, DOT. Mm -hmm. Other than that, um, it's about welcome back, Mr. Hale. Had a good vacation. I did. Good to see you. Your head's still bald and shiny. Not sunburned. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's all I got. Thanks, sir. Commissioner Hale. Uh, I'd just like to say welcome back. I'm glad to be back. Uh, last week's meeting, even though it wasn't one of our regular scheduled meetings, it's the first one I've missed in four and a half years. So I was going to say, yeah. Really, uh, I didn't want to do that, but, you know, family. Hopefully we're out of those. Yes, right. Hopefully so. So, But um, that's all. That's really all I had to say. And I do appreciate all the folks, like you say, our EMS, our fire, all our county staff. I, You know, I, I've mentioned it as much as I can in these meetings. I, I know I forget a lot of the different departments we have, but you guys and, and myself all work with them daily. And uh, we couldn't do it without them. I'm telling you guys, we couldn't do it without them. And I just appreciate them. So thank you. Yes, sir. A uh, couple of things real quick. I just, you know, thank Thank our county staff, number one. I mean, we load them up with things. It's, uh, I've been here two years and a couple months, and it's snowballed into the amount of stuff that's just come at one time. Uh, I mean, there's always something, but usually never this much at one time. But uh, I think I'm grateful to our office for all their hard work and dedication because it takes it takes a lot to turn out what what we need for information and backup. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Also, I. Thank Fire Rescue and Chief Hand for what you're doing, fighting for your department. Uh, obviously, we got tough decisions lies ahead, and we'll we'll forge through and try. To, absolutely, we're going to do the best we can for the people of Swanee County. Uh, as Commissioner Hale said, I'd like to thank our teachers. I mean, it's, we're grateful. If, without them, we don't have anything, and we got some good ones in this county. We do. Uh, last thing I leave is a little bit of a sad note. Is uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to the Poole family. Mr. Lowell Poole passed away today, age 96, was a veteran, just a great man. Wow. Uh, just one of the best people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. And, and, so, uh, and you're so much short when you say a great man. He truly, absolutely. he was an awesome, fantastic person. Yep. All I need is a motion to adjourn, gentlemen. So move. Have a motion by Commissioner Hale. Second. Second by Commissioner Land. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Semi parked out back. <laughs>